Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, Termel, and Lesson 35 is a report by Heloisa Primaveri, who's helped start the Argentinian Global Red Barter System of Creditos, and she did a report to the World Global, the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre, 2001, and here I'm going to read parts from it, the first part, and then in the next lesson, another part, important stuff. This is the development of the barter network in Argentina. She witnessed it, her report. What is the Red Global de Trueque by Heloisa Primaveri? It was on the 1st of May 1995 that a group of ecologists, worried about the impact unemployment was having on the quality of life, created the first barter club comprising 20 people in Bernal, 30 kilometers from Buenos Aires in Argentina. Every Saturday, group members met to exchange their products. At the beginning, bread, various foodstuffs, fruit and vegetables, tarts, handcrafts, and afterwards services, dental care, hairdressing, massage therapy, etc. Some months later, the first club opened in Buenos Aires, then in the north of the city, and then one a year later, a television program gave a great impulse to further growth, which up to then had been rather slow and led by the early pioneers. The accounts which from the outset had been recorded in a centralized notebook, were soon computerized because of increase in transactions. Sometime later, a system of checks was set up, similar to the French cell system. However, they only lasted for a few hours. In effect, quickly, these checks are endorsed and used for other transactions, people knowing each other, and the vouchers coming from a friend or a trusted acquaintance. This was how the first ticket through Eke, an exchange voucher, came into being, which was transferable to anyone who was part of the system. Right from the start, these units were called credits because of their association with the trust that existed between participants. On becoming a member of the club, each participant would receive the same number of credits, like monopoly money, thus encouraging and greatly multiplying the speed of transactions. Since everyone receives the same number of credits, the initial equality surprises new members and at the same time creates the creation of a new club. Now, it could also be the same credit limit and they borrow against it interest-free. Both work. Thus, it was that two years later, it was possible to find groups organized in different regions of Greater Buenos Aires, as well as in the interior of the country. A form of administration linking the groups soon turned out to be necessary in view of the complexity of exchanges that took place between clubs. And the Barter Red came into being, the clubs starting to call themselves nodes. No, nodes or knots, this central government enabled equality to be maintained between the groups and the members of those groups. Geographical conditions led to the creation of the network so that transactions could be controlled more easily. And you can't steal because you got nowhere to hide it. The founding group defines some ethical principles, but without doubt each autonomous group has freely interpreted them. Today there exist a great number of interconnected groups, but also many others completely independent from the founding group. Although the media was responsible for the initial spread of this initiative, it was the city government of Buenos Aires that provided the first state support. Firstly, from the Department of Social Affairs, and afterwards the Department of Industry, Trade and Commerce. This attitude encouraged other towns to do the same, and five years later, there are more than 40 that have given their backing to similar initiatives in one way or another. Well, it's true in Europe, too, you know. <laughs> Three years after its creation, the Red Global de Trueque, already comprising more than a million members, was invited to Helsinki to show its experiment to other community initiatives that shared its form of resistance to economic globalization. The members of the network therefore started to see their success, speed of growth, numbers of active members, for example, in an entirely new light. Various training systems were set up. Diffusion throughout other Latin American countries began on a systematic basis, all within the context of creating a critical mass, a political visibility, variety in the experiments, and to join together with forms of economic solidarity. Five years after its creation, the RGT is represented in 14 Argentinian provinces and nine other countries in the region. Uruguay, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, El Salvador, Canada, Peru, Chile, and Bolivia. 
even if the calculations are not exact, there are an estimated 400,000 active people just in Argentina with transactions that provide on average between one and four minimum wages, about 300 US dollars per family. Public tax returns have multiplied and a judge has even authorized the payment of a living allowance in social money. The national government has committed itself to promoting the system of multiple bartering using social money as a development strategy for small and micro business. Boy, I told you they were going to come out of debt. After the creation of the Latin American Socioeconomic Solidarity Network in 1999, whose goal is the diffusion of multiple bartering and other forms of econ economy of solidarity, and at the end of the first wor uh, World Social Forum that took place in January 2001 in Porto Alegre, Brazil, a global socioeconomic solidarity network, Red Global de Socioeconomia Solidaria, RGSES was set up in which social money is considered as a complementary strategy with other economic, cultural, and social forms of neoliberal globalization resistance, a strategy capable of rebuilding the social fabric from the bottom to the top. Yeah, build a lifeboat, you save yourself. Interpretations on social phenomenon, money. Comparison with similar experiments in other parts of the world, Ithaca hours in the United States, Canadian let schemes widely adopted in Europe and Australia, the French says, and the Mexican Tlaloc enables us to define four principal characteristics of the Argentinian model. Issuing of social money used from the outset by the groups. Good. Development of a permanent user-friendly system with regular weekly meetings, which allows a strong identity to build up in little groups, in which all producers at the same time, consumers, and transactions contribute to the creation of new social relationships, and unnecessary when the whole country does it, to have little meetings. Open configuration within the RGT with few shared rules and a great deal of group autonomy, everyone able to select their own manner and style of functioning, as long as the chips are backed up by the same collateral in the same way, who cares who's running a bank? Uh, da, 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 da. In general, members of the system express a double loyalty to their original knot and to the global network. In nodos, the nodos organize themselves into regions and these into a national level, all the time representing ethical rather than regulatory principles. Only monthly meetings and one or two assemblies per year are used to establish these different links and create consensus. Social money administration problems take up a huge part of the life of this enormous virtual social enterprise, which deliberately avoids central leadership. And everyone can run their own Let's account. I run my own on the internet. Despite the existence of similar experiments in all sorts of contexts, it is worth stressing that the Argentinian experiment was born independently of the others. It is the communication explosion, principally through the internet, that has enabled the RGT to benefit from the strategies of other groups, and thus was able to share its experience with La Otra Bolsa de Valores of Mexico, the Tlalocs, the Ithaca Hours in New York, the heirs of the Canadian Letts, the French Sez and the Dutch Nopels, a surprising effect of this contact has been the increased trust in the value and legitimacy of local experience. When we wonder how the Argentinian phenomenon occurred, there are many who acknowledge the weight of the programs of structural readjustment imposed by multilateral organizations. But if we wish to go further in our understanding of that particular circumstances surrounding the emergence of social money, it's obvious that there were more creative inspirations than those that could come from economic, anthropological, or social theory. Hereafter, you will find the principles of consensus between the various groups that were able to reinvent the market by using their own chips instead of having no market with no chips. Uh, and afterwards, some elements and two texts that have been in sources of inspiration for new practices open to change and looking for new ways. Part 2 next.